20, so I only got eight minutes, so I got to roll. Uh, Congressman Bob Good, Chairman of the Freedom Caucus, good to have you. The first thing, though, even though time is short, happy Valentine's Day to your lovely wife, Tracy. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to you and Ann as well, John. Thank you. So, Bob, uh, let me let me ask you this. How do we lose this race in New York? It's hard to imagine, John, how anybody could vote for Democrat. Uh, you know, they're pointing to the early voting and Republicans not early voting, and there's a snowstorm on Election Day. But how could anybody vote for a Democrat? Everyone is worse off than they were when this president got into office three years ago. Everybody's less safe. Everybody's less secure. Everybody's less prosperous. Everybody's less free. By any standard of measurement, the country is doing much worse. The Trump policies were working. All the Biden policies are failing. He's basically came into office and said, OK, if that's working for President Trump, I'm going to do just the opposite, whether it's just out of incompetence, pure evil, spite, whatever the reasons might be, opening the border, uh, obviously massive uh, uh, spending that's unprecedented, uh, you know, putting criminals ahead of victims. I mean, uh, war on American energy, or, uh, war on affordable, reliable energy, and, and, and you're going into climate extremism. And you just name it. So it's it. There's I, I cannot explain. Obviously, it's New York, uh, but uh, but it's a district that we won with Mr. Santos. And by the way, we shouldn't have been having this election because we foolishly kicked out George Santos, uh, who was a uh, a, a good Republican voter, a conservative voter, who was elected by the people of his respective district, who should have been able to decide whether or not to keep him during the primary season now and or the general election this fall. It should have been up to the people of that district to decide. Instead, we kicked him out and created this vacancy, and now the Democrats have it. Uh, you know, Bob, like, you sit here every day like me, and you, you look at why the Republicans would kick Santos out. I, I don't care the guy lied his resume. He said he wasn't going to run again. Why would Republicans vote to kick out a reliable Freedom Caucus, America First vote, so they can replace it with another communist? Like, why? Like what, so the, the New York Times can write one nice line about him? I mean, yes, John, you're, where's you're the exactly resolve right. in this part? Yes, he's not been convicted of a crime. Why was he not allowed just to serve out his term? He'd been disgraced and embarrassed and suffering consequence for it, public scrutiny or public condemnation, I should say, and then, again, choosing not to run again. How foolish, how foolish. And so now we've got the Swazi guy casting a vote for the communists in Congress instead of George Santos casting a vote for the Americans in Congress. And he was a reliable, solid, conservative vote. Uh, and let the people of this district, you know, would have been able to decide whether not to keep him, except he chose not to run anyway. Uh, hey, John, I want to alert you. The big issue of the day, though, that today and tomorrow is this FISA reform, FISA reform. Uh, the rubber's going to meet the road today on what we're going to do to reform FISA. You've got the two competing interests, the Intelligence uh, Committee and the Judiciary Committee, competing bills got merged into one. We're going to have four amendments that will reform FISA appropriately that need to pass the Judiciary Committee amendments versus the three amendments from the Intel Committee. And I'll just just summarize it in this, John. We can't keep spying without a warrant. We can't keep buying data from private companies that would require a warrant. That's when the federal government buys data that they can't get without a warrant. They just buy it from private companies. You can't expand spying to cover local private hotspots, Wi-Fi hotspots. You're sitting in a, you know, in a McDonald's or you're sitting in a hotel, and, and the, the government can't expand spying to, to cover those areas. And then we just can't add more ways to spy. And the Intelligence Committee wants to expand spying powers, wants to expand surveillance on U.S. citizens without a warrant, wants to fight the warrant provision. So you're going to see a showdown today and tomorrow. We're going to see where the speaker is. We're going to see where the Republican Party is. We're going to have members on record voting. Do they stand up for Americans and liberty and freedom, or do they start stand up for the deep state swamp? The FISA reform is a big, big deal today and tomorrow to see where that goes. How does it look? I mean, we're, we're all opposed to this. It's, an, it's outrageous that we're still doing uh, these things without warrants. But we know you got a bunch of Republicans in there. They're going to say, you know, it's got to keep you safe, and they're going to, and they're going to cave. What does Johnson do? How do we, how do well, we, how do we win this? Yeah. 
Well, what the speaker has said was he's, he's been on the Judiciary Committee for his whole career, and he was on the side of the Judiciary Committee reforms until he becomes speaker. And then the intelligence community brings him into a room and scares the heck out of him. You know, the, one, the people who want to do the spying scare the heck out of him, tell him that, hey, if we don't do this spying, there's going to be terrorist acts in the country. But we can't sacrifice liberty in the name of safety because then we will get or, re- or deserve neither. And so uh, the, the Intelligence Committee is threatening to take down the rule if we make them vote on whether or not uh, to have a warrant, whether or not they can buy data that they, that they can't get without a warrant, whether or not they can expand spying, again, to private businesses, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots and things like that. And so uh, we're going to find out today. And, and what part of the victory, John, will be reforming FISA, but the other part of the victory, of course, would be exposing the members of the Republican House who are going to side with the spies, side with the deep state, side with the swamp, instead of siding with the American people. So it's going to be a big deal today. Uh, today and tomorrow, Rules Committee is meeting this morning. I want to give shout-outs to Chip Roy, Andy Biggs, Warren Davidson, Freedom Caucus members who've led on this bill and done the yeoman's work. These are the guys involved in the Judiciary Committee, which I'm not on that committee. But it is a big deal, and we're going to find out who the Republicans are uh, today and tomorrow on these votes. All right, we got to go, but it sounds to me like you got to come back on Friday to give us a recap of what 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 happened. Is that work? Is that workable? Well, uh, I don't want to say it all, I'm not in my calendars. I can't I can't say that for sure, but certainly can try to do that. But I will tell you, John, the Democrats, this the, the judiciary bill with the good reforms passed at a committee like 35 to 2. Turns out the Democrats don't want the government spying on them either. Now what's happened is Biden is whipping votes the Democrats to try to not to get them to vote for the good reforms. So we're gonna, we, we, this this we, a chance to be bipartisan, but uh, st- stay tuned today. Stay tuned to the House today. Watch for the messaging coming out from the, the conservative members and the conservative groups. We're going to try to put all the pressure we can on to get the right things done. Hi, right, buddy. Appreciate and Johnson you. Cave. Okay, I know you got to go. Thank you for being with us. I'll try to get you back on Friday for a recap, Bob. Have a great day.